Hi everyone, it's Mike here. Now recently I've been having a conversation on Facebook with a lady called Chelsea from the Paper Octillo Studio. That's her channel on YouTube. And we were discussing our favourite colours and our least favourite colours to use in an art journal page. Now, most people already know that my least favourite colour is purple and that one of my favourite colours is teal or turquoise. And we kind of got to talking about how difficult it would be to try and integrate those two colours into one project. So one that you really love and one that you really, really hate. Um, so we kind of talked ourselves into a little bit of a challenge. And that's what today is. So Shell challenged me to use purple and turquoise or teal in a single project and I've challenged her to use her favourites and the ones that she hates too. So you can find Shell's channel in the description area below so you can see what she's done with this challenge and I will see you again at the end of this. So I'm working in my 10x10 10 10 journal and this is my favourite colour, the townhouse teal or any teal in, in general and this is my least favourite colour which is purple and in this case I'm using lavender. I also will be bringing in two dark colours as well in the same colour range. I'll be bringing in a deep turquoise and I'll also be bringing in a very deep violet to work with on this page as well. As you can see by the pencil lines on the page I've roughed out the, the kind of shape of the, the layout of my page so I know exactly where I need to start blending the colours together to get the effect that I want. So I also know where I don't need to put that much paint so because that's going to be covered in the long run. So at the minute I'm just going to be adding on my teal colour which is the top part of the page and then I'm going to blend that down through the page until that blends and develops into the purple colour. So you'll see it progress as I carry on. So this is where I introduced the darker purple which is the violet which is also from Reeves. This is the same as the lavender colour that I've already, or the same brand as the lavender colour that I've already used. So I'm just going to introduce that darker colour right at the very bottom of the page and then blend that up. Um, I don't want it to be too strong, I want the lavender purple to be um, more prominent but you'll, you'll see where I place the lavender, the, the violet should say, um, and then blend that out while the paint's still wet. I know there are some people out there who've used acrylic paints before and say that they have real difficulty in blending the paints together but for me I found the trick is to make sure that you've still got plenty of moisture on the page and the, the paints tend to blend okay 
Um, they don't blend perfectly, but then again, you don't really want them to blend perfectly. You, you want to be able to see um, a kind of transitional point where one turns into the other. So um, with it being a warm day today, which it's very, very warm today, um, it, it does dry pretty quickly. So I have been keeping the paint quite moist and you could always add in some kind of retarder to stop the paint from drying too quickly. So you can just see here, I'm just adding in some of that deep turquoise now. So this is the, the deeper tone of, or deeper shade, if you like, of that, uh, that teal color. So I'm going to be adding that towards the top of the page. So I've got the real deep blue, turquoisey blue at the top of the page, blending into the lighter teal, and then that teal blends into the lavender, which then in turn blends into that darker violet purple. So that's it for the time being. I will be adding a little bit more paint a bit later on. So I'm just going to dry what's on the page now so that I can start to build up the structure of the page by adding in my other colours and my focal points. So I've just got the heat tool out and I'm going to just give it a, a once over just to dry things so I don't get my elbows or catch any of my clothes in it um, and that it's easy to work with. So I've removed the page protector and I've had a bit of a tidy up and clean up and got rid of all that excess paint that I'm not going to be using. So all I'm going to do now is just grab a pencil and just draw back in that line that I wanted to use for my foreground. So I'm just going to very, very loosely, just very, very lightly, just draw in that guideline just so I know where exactly I need to start adding in my next layer of colour. So the next colour that I'm going to add to the page is black. This is a matte black that's not got any kind of shine to it when it's dry, um, almost like a chalky paint. And I'm going to use this neat, when I say neat, I'm not going to add any water to it. So I'm going to use this to start building up my foreground colour. And I'm also going to bring back that violet paint, violent, violet paint as well, because I want to add some of that deep purple into the black, just to give it that kind of sheen and tonal quality, so that when you look at it in a certain way, you'll get the same sort of purpley blackness showing through.
And while I've still got that violet on my work, on my work mat, I'm just going to add another little, um, almost hor like a horizon line in the background using that purple. Uh, I just wanted to add a little bit more of that colour in and then just lightly and loosely just paint it in and blend it with the background just to give you that kind of effect of a distant horizon. So I'm going to use this matte medium from Mod Podge to stick down the first of my focal images. Now I'm going to apply a very liberal amount of the matte medium onto the page and then take my focal image and then add a liberal amount onto the back of that too. And then take a piece of kitchen roll and just smooth it down onto the page to try and eliminate as many wrinkles and bubbles and creases that might want to try and bed themselves in there. So this first focal image is of the moon and it was an image taken from Wikipedia. Um, obviously it's personal use so it's allowed and all I've done is just resized it to fit because it was a very very large image um, and I've just got it to fit um, to the dimensions that I wanted so it worked within the page. So the image was printed out on my inkjet printer and allowed to dry for a couple of hours before I used it to make sure that the ink had set and dried perfectly uh, and then this makes it easier to add a coat over the top um, without worrying about any of the ink blending or any of the ink running. So the next image I'm going to add, I'm going to stamp onto the page and I'm using the Ranger Archival Ink in Jet Black because I want it to be in silhouette. And the image is a stamp that I picked up from my local craft store and it was on offer and it, I paid 99 pence for it, which is, you know, very, very inexpensive. And I know that I'm probably going to get quite a lot of use out of this little stamp because I can think of lots and lots of different uses for it. But this was the perfect image for what I wanted to do. So now that everything's had a chance to dry, I wanted to add a thin border around the rest of the page. Now obviously it's bound up the top, um, so I can't add one up there. So just down the sides is going to be, well I'll have to settle for that really. So to do that I'm just using the Jet Black Archive link as I did before, and one of the um, Distress Foams from Tim Holtz and Ranger. And it works really well just to add that little kind of frame around the border of your page. So the final part of the page is just to add a little quote or a little saying just onto the bottom and to do this I've printed this off my computer or onto my inkjet printer because I wanted a black background for it. I wanted it to sit inside that silhouette of the hill uh, and I've tried to match the black as much as possible. I know you can see it here but I will try and blend it a little bit more. It's impossible to get the depth of black exactly the same and I didn't want to trust my handwriting with the white pen on this because I know I've just completely messed it up and I like the page I just didn't want to give that the chance to happen but before I stuck the quote block down I did go around the edges with that um, jet black archive link as well just to make sure there was no raw edges that you could see and I'm just using the edge of the blending tool just on the edges of the paper just to try and blend those um, those lines in a little bit more so now I can't decide whether to add some twinkling stars up in the sky or maybe add some light, maybe like from a city on the horizon line. But for now, I'm just going to call it a day and I'm just going to leave it there. I may come back to this page at a, page at a later date and do that, or I may not. Um, but I'll have to sit and look at it a bit more before I decide what I'm going to do. But for now, that's it for me.
So there you go. It's quite surprising what you can use when you've got two colours, one that you hate and one that you love. I'm very happy with the outcome of that page. Um, I hope you enjoyed watching the process too. So if you did, please remember to give it a thumbs up, share the video, and if you haven't subscribed to my YouTube channel already, you can do so by clicking this button here. But don't forget, pop over to Shell and see what she's done with this challenge too. Like I said, her channel link is in the description area below this one. That's all from me for now. I will see you all again real soon. Bye for now.